Kidoki. Good morning. I think I'm live. Do, 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 do. Um, like a bit. Um, okay. Was it? it looks a little bit high there. Hey guys, I'm just trying to um, see if um, just organize my laptop up here. Uh, this is our uh, weekly Q and A. I'll just um, turn this off. I'm getting myself organized. Um, okay, let me just just get some with the laptop a little bit um, organized here. My hair's all a bit funny this morning. Oh. <laughs> let me just see if I can do do. Okay, so uh, just wait to um see if um anyone pops on i've got some questions here already to answer for you um i'm just going to see if i can screen share here but i don't know if it's going to work let me just oh facebook's doing something on my i was going to check it on my phone but it's doing something weird it's up up um, updating so i'll let that update um in the meantime um i hope everybody is well um welcome to all our new members of the group it's lovely having you in the group um feel free to post anytime um pop any questions up um any advice this is what the group's here for um a supportive group i offer uh, regular trainings and education i've um, got some in the guide section there's um some really good articles on equitation science off the track thoroughbred retraining and um, yeah, I do my weekly Q&A and I also um, upload a YouTube video every week. So um, look out for that. I've got some questions here that I will um, address and I'll just, if anyone um, has any questions, uh, pop them in the comments below and I'll also answer them here. I'm just trying to find where, oh, there's the comments there. Facebook's just changed things a little bit. And um, I've got to find my bearings again with all the the new tech things <laughs> okay so my apologies for um not being able to make last week's q a i've had a terrible terrible week i lost one of my precious dogs laszlo my beautiful blue whippet and i'm not coping very well um, honestly it's just been horrendous i lost him to 1080 bait poisoning and I'm just, yeah, very hard to process it all. Um, and I found him last Sunday morning. Um, he went missing during the night. It was just tragic. Um, anyway, so my apologies for not um, being here for you guys on the Sunday morning, but we're here this Sunday. Okay, so let's look at, I've got, I'll just open this question here. Um, in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Christy. So Christy Weber um, has a question. Um, she's, um, so her biggest obstacle with her off the track thoroughbred at the moment is transitioning from arena work at home or on trails, you know, around with adjustment uh, friends to outings with high energy like endurance ride or a riding club. So his anxiety sends his brain straight back to his racing days. This is his third year of retirement, so it's hard to deal with the fizz, but I'm not giving up. Good on you, Christy. Um, so any advice um, would be gladly received. Awesome. Okay. So it's his third year of retirement. Um, I just can't... I, I, not sure I was I remember um, asking for a little bit of uh, extra details which I know you'll get back to me with how long have you had him um, so it's very common for off the track thoroughbreds to um, associate going out with the racing environment 
um, and the massive amount of adrenaline. They've also got um, quite often negative associations with racing um, being such a highly demanding um, sport. They, you know, I mean, running under such, um, putting their body, body, body under such extreme pressure is obviously, um, it causes pain. Um, they, you know, I mean, there's so many things. He could have uh, been a bleeder. Um, or he's had injuries, but I mean, just generally um, running at that speed, you know what we're like when running at that speed, um, our, well, running, you know, if we go out running, we're not going to be running at that speed, but um, so my brain's still fried from the trauma of this last week. Sorry, guys. Um, but running and our exercising, our muscles fatigue, we get that lactic acid build up and horses do as well. Um, so they've got negative associations quite often on race days. They know what's coming up and horses have an incredible memory. They will never forget anything. Um, and especially when it comes to fear, um, if anything has created fear in them, that will always stay in their, in their memory bank and it can be triggered. So the, the what we need to do is we need to uh, build new neural pathways or build new associations for um, your off the track thoroughbred to associate going out with a positive experience, an enjoyable experience. Um, now this is going to be a process um, and it's, it's, you sort of take it in um, little baby steps. So instead of expecting him to, I'll just move my laptop out here. I feel like I'm a little bit of a, there we go. Instead of expecting to go out um, and, um, well, you know, going out and wanting to compete on that day, my suggestion would be to take him out on very small outings. Now, this depends on when his anxiety starts. And I've, I know that um, I've sent you some questions to ask around here. When does his anxiety start? Is it when he's at home? He's un, um, up loading onto the float? Is he okay loading onto the float? And is it when he gets to um, the new area? And a new environment, does he start getting anxious there? So wherever it starts, you need to build up new associations with that um, with that experience. So for an example, um, if, he's, if he's okay on the float and it's going out to the new environment, say an endurance ride or riding club, go out on the day um, and unload him but don't ride in the riding club don't ride in the endurance um, go out in the endurance ride just be around the environment um, take some hay uh, try and um, so what you want to do is is build positive associations for him to go out and be going to riding club and to be going to the endurance so take him there don't ride him um if he's okay tying up look he may be a bit anxious uh because once again he has this association with going out with a negative experience with pain with fear um so take some hay take his favorite food um find my dog's stuck out the door there suki come on come in baby I've got my dogs everywhere here. I've got, um, God bless them. I've, I've had seven dogs. I lost Laszlo, but I have six dogs here now with me. My still my six. Come on, Six. And she's stuck outside. She won't come in. <laughs> Suki, come on. Suki, come in the door. Good girl. Good girl. Do you want to say hello? I might bring Six. Come up here. Do you want to say hello to everybody? I'll just get her. She's all, they're all rescue. Come here, Suki. She's a little bit. Hello, darling. I know you're such a good girl. Hey, want to say hello to everybody? And I'm a little fluffy one. Really wants to come up as well. So here's little Suka. Suki loved Leslo. Ah, oh, she chased him around everywhere. I know Luba. Luba down. So say hello, this Tuki Luki. She's a little. I know she. <laughs> she's never liked being picked up very much. She's getting a lot, um, lot more used to it. Do you not want to say hello, Suki Luka? Suki. Hey. Oh, wait, no, I'll put you back down. She doesn't want you. You want to sit on mommy's lap? No? There. There you go. My little rescue girl. One of my, they're all rescue except for Bailey, hey? And Lassie Lulu. Okay, I'll pop back, pop her back down. There you go, Sukas. Hello, Squiggles. There we go. Oh, that was a bit traumatic for her, wasn't it? <laughs> She's getting used to it. So going back to, sorry, I just had to have a dog interruption there. Going back to um, 
recreate so re recreating positive experiences with going out so if it's okay going on the float and you're getting to the new environment let's try and create um new associations by when he gets out into that environment um i'm going to presume that um he's anxious as soon as he gets there uh and you don't want to ride him so you don't want to ride him when he's anxious so have some nice hay tied up to your float um if he's anxious tied up float don't leave him just hand like hold him in hand um let him have a little bit of a pick find um at home try and find a positive um like i've got a video um bonding with you off the track thoroughbred where you can find um a nice scratchy spot something that um you know he enjoys um, if you found a nice scratchy spot on his wither and just um, while he's at the new environment, um, add some positive experiences in for him. If you know his scratchy spot, scratch him while he's there, give him a little walk around, scratch him, give him a nice feed um, and just let him just um, experience it without having to go out and ride or anything like that. Um, I, I, he, he will still probably be anxious this first time, but if you repeat this, um two or three times uh you will find that he will realize that going out is not going to be going out and racing but going out and just standing and relaxing um and having um some hay uh and yeah that that's the process that you need to do um and it, it can take some time uh if he is um anxious going on the float well, once again, that's that goes back to um, doing some float work with him. So let me know. I know we're having a chat, so so let me know with that. But yeah, you're wanting to um, sort of, the, as I said, the negative associations are never going to go, uh, especially with pain and fear with horses. But you can bury them so they can sit in back of the mem. They can they'll sit there in the memory bank, and you can add a lot of positive experience can increasingly add the positive associations on them so that the negative experiences and associations still sit there, but they're not, they don't become active. They're not triggered. Um, and that's what you want to avoid. So this is where retraining comes in. Um, I hope that helps Christy. I know we'll have a chat a little bit further um, with, with this question. Um, and let me know how, how long you've had him. Cause I know he's been three years off the track, but if he hasn't had, um, you know, any, um, retraining and specifically retraining with this, uh, you know, this situation, building positive experiences when going out, well, then it's just going to stay there until it's addressed. Also too, um, I know I've asked you uh, how, what are his actual behaviours when he gets there, because you want to go back and make sure that you have him well trained in his basic responses. So he's in hand work on the ground, he's stopping nice and lightly in hand on the ground. And uh, because when you've got those responses really nice and light and he's relaxed at home, he's standing until you ask him to move forward, um, you can then, you, you can use those out in the um, the new experience. And when he gets really agitated, he may be um, walking around in circles or, um, you know, not wanting to stand still or rearing or, um, you know, all of these type of behaviours. Um, you can you can practice your basic responses and get him to, he already knows to stand still at home, for example, to get him to learn to, you know, slow his legs down and stand still out in a new environment. Even if it's for like 10 seconds, you reward him, walk him off. So I hope this makes sense. Um, uh, let me know, let me know in the comments. And once again, we'll have a little bit more of a chat around this. Uh, yeah, so I've got, I have a sip of my coffee because I love coffee. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, this is a, a question that I've actually been come on guys working on. Um, let me find this question. In the group. Come on guys. into my group sorry guys i'm just finding the question here i know but i want to read it out correctly okie dokie okay here we go 
Okay, question from um, Lara Alexander. Hi, Karen. My new OTDB puts her head out and leans on the bit at the halt. How can I stop her from doing this and get her to halt in a nice soft frame? So this is so common, isn't it? <laughs> um, and it, it it's a process. So this is a symptom of coming out of racing, uh, the way they use their body being very heavy on the forehand um, and... Sorry, I'm having a joking. Come on, guys. This is usually common in my Q and A's. Dogs barking all the time. Red, red, red. Bailey, come on, come here. Come on, come on. Ah, uh, uh, Suki. Oh, this. So... Okay, hopefully they're not too loud for you guys. So when you're riding and. Your horse leans so they're heavy. So they're heavy on the on the, at the hole, leans on the bit, and she's um puts her head out and leans on the bit at the hole. So that's actually on the forehand. Okay, so you can imagine um, her leaning into the bit. She's putting her weight on her front legs, and it's all sort of bearing down forward. Now this is um, a horse that's on the forehand. Um, in racing, as I've mentioned quite a few times, they are so habituated to leaning into pressure. They spend a lot of the time, um, they, they, particularly in their gallops, they work a lot on the forehand. Um, they're sort of, yeah, they're more, more horizontal than um, upright, which you see in equestrian disciplines where they're in self-carriage and using their hind leg and strengthening a lot more. Guys, come on. Oh, my God, they're being no naughty this morning. Bailey, come on. Oh, dogs, love them, but they always do this in my lives. Um, so, Lara, it's a process and it's interesting because I'm actually working with this with an off-the-track thoroughbred at the moment um, who was doing exactly the same thing and even four months into his training, he's still doing it. So, at first of all, what you want to do is start back um, with your in-hand training, teaching your mare to um, stop and go in hand on a light response so that they learn that they can give to pressure um, and that they, instead of leaning into pressure, they um, give to pressure and we need to teach them to be in self-carriage. So self-carriage is where they're not leaning into the pressure, um, where they're standing, you know, um, standing without leaning into you without leaning into the rain um, and this is a process because not only have they habituated to so much pressure um, leaning into the bit but they also haven't got the the strength to be in in self-carriage and to um, stop without leaning into the pressure basically they're using their their body in an incorrect way in uh, a posture that's um, on the forehand uh, and, and what we want instead is to train her to be in self-carriage so she's not leaning and then progressively strengthen her, her posture, her top line, strengthen her hind end so that she's stopping to light responses and, and she's stopping um, from the strength of her hind end, if you know what I mean. Um, and that is like months and months of, of retraining and strengthening. Um, so basically the answer to your question is how do you stop her from doing that? Follow a correct retraining program where you're teaching her to give to pressure in hand first and then under saddle, uh, they will, so transitions, so transitions are really going to help um, stopping and going. Now, quite often when they're very heavy in front, I teach them to, um, I, I teach them to go forward first. So I'm got, I've got a training series coming up um, and it's actually showing the process of how I solve this problem with a current off the track thoroughbred that I have in training. Um, so that'll be really good for you to watch um, and see what I do there. But you'll notice if she's leaning in front like that, the first thing you will notice is um, she's not very, I would say she's not very forward to the legs. She's not very active and forward in her walk. Um, 
And so for, you haven't got a nice, good forward active walk to start with. So the first thing I'll work on is um, let me know, but is she lazy? Is she, is she sort of lazy and dull to the leg? Uh, so what I work on first, because they need to be active and forward first before you can then ask them to come back and, and learn to stop lightly. And, and use their back and their top line. So that nice soft outline and head carriage that you're um, looking for is a symptom of a nice strong, a nice, sorry, the nice um, soft frame that you're looking for is a symptom of um, a nice strong top line um, being created, um, being able to slow down with putting their weight on their hind legs instead of bearing down and putting their weight on their front legs and into the bridle. Okay, so she actually uses uh, off the track thoroughbreds once again, have habituated to so much um, bit pressure um, and they use the bit and leaning on the front end as as a way to, to, to help balance themselves in a way. They've sort of, um, used it as a, a crutch so we need to teach them to um, be in self-carriage um, and sort of be independent in sort of the way that they stand um, and that comes down to starting off with your in-hand work I've got a little I linked a little video um, in your comment yesterday Bailey um, which just starts with um, stop and go in hand with um, one of my horses, Tommy. Um, but as I said, I've got quite a bit of retraining coming up with how I um, how how I fix this. Okay, and fixing this is it's actually months of um, it doesn't have to take that long, but it is a retraining process. Um, and this behaviour is a symptom of her not being in self carriage, being on the forehand and leaning into bit pressure. So you can imagine if she's habituated to bit pressure and she uses it to balance herself, um, asking her not to do that and to stand there um, and shift her weight back onto hind end. Okay, is is a new behaviour for her. It's a new way of holding her body. And also, too, you want to make sure that she is um, not in pain. You've done body work with her. Is she comfortable in her hind end? Um, off the track thoroughbreds will quite often have sacroiliac issues. They'll have some issues in their in their hind end. Um, is she weak in her hind end? Does she look like she hasn't got any top line? Um, she hasn't got any nice muscled rump. Um, yeah, let me know, Lara. What um, what her her physique's like and what her posture's like just in general you're more than welcome to send through a video to me um, of her doing this um and um it just gives me more of an idea but i pretty much think i know what's happening um because we need to retrain off the track thoroughbreds to use their body in a completely different way and we need to um re-muscle them redevelop <coughs> redevelop um <clears throat> their, their muscular system system and the, and their posture like us um, if we're going to the gym this takes time uh, you know for instance if you've got a bad posture um, someone's been walking around for years and years in a bad posture um, and they go to a body worker and um, a, someone that works with posture and things like that they have to continually going back um, you know for continual lessons or or sessions to um, <clears throat> train the body to um, carry themselves in a new way so you need to do that mentally okay be aware of how you're you're carrying your body and um and and catch yourself and retrain it but it's also building neural pathways because your brain builds neural pathways of how your muscles and your body moves your locomotion and also too needing to retrain so just say you've you've um, been very stiff in your back and you've carried your body very upright your muscles are going to be locked in there like that so you need to um, retrain just say more core mus musculature um, which may be very weak if you've been carrying yourself in an unhealthy way and it's the same with the horse um, so not only do you have to change mental your, your mental processes of awareness um, you need to redevelop the musculature Physically, um, and the same with the horse. They need to um, build new neural pathways on how they move, um, and they need to change their muscular to, to with that, um, so that she, um, they can stop um, in self carriage instead of being on the forehand and using the bit as a as a you know uh, a sort of a, a crutch um, to help them balance. 
And the thing is, we um, we need to be on top. So because we, as the trainer and the rider, we need to be continually aware of what they're doing underneath us and asking for the correct response and feeling. You know, if she's leaning, um, make sure you've got a nice, good forward walk first and then asking for your transition stop and go. But if she's already on the forehand in her walk, okay, you're going to get a very heavy stop. If she's nice and active in her walk, you can start to feel like um, she is, um, you can start to feel like you can slow her down without that leaning pressure. So for example, when you do this, you don't want to worry about her nose being stuck out. Instead, you want to feel like that she can stop um, with rain pressure without bearing her weight forward. Now, once you've got that, you then go up and, and you shape that as she becomes lighter with the responses to the, to the soft head carriage um, and that soft frame. Now, this is um, definitely a process and I can't wait to get the training videos out to you guys on how I actually do this with um, the off the track thoroughbred because it's exactly what he's doing, um, bearing down into into the bridle and the pressure. He's a lot better now, um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, I, I, I'm really excited to show you um, how I solve that problem. So I hope that answers your question, Lara. Let me know in the comments. Um, let me know um, if, if that's given a clear idea of um, your um, what's happening and how to solve it. Uh, there is some, if you have a look in the guides section, I've got some guides on equitation science because that's the principles that I use. So you want to train um, with your off-the-track thoroughbred, you want to go back to your basic response training and retrain those to light responses. So you're stopping in hand on a light response. You're going forward on a light response. And when I mean a light response, so you're not feeling that leaning, um, you're slowing their legs down um, with just the, the slightest amount of pressure. Now, when you've got control of the legs, okay, and your horse is slowing their legs down, to a light pressure and then not bearing into the bit or into the lead rein, that's when you can start to work on the the soft frame and the head carriage. But until they're stopping lightly and you're thinking about what's happening with their legs, um, you can't get the frame without being able to um, have control the legs in a proper way. So the frame comes after um, you have um, the nice and light responses with with slowing their legs, with going forward with a nice light response and with turning and things like that. I hope that makes sense. It's really, it's actually quite good when I explain it in a video um, because <clears throat> when I'm doing it, because you can actually see what's happening. So that's coming up. Uh, okay, so they're my questions for this Q&A. Uh, they haven't got any more questions popped in. So... I might leave it there and let me know it as i said you can pop uh, any questions in any time throughout the week i always pop a reminder in with the q a the day before but let me know what you would like me to talk about um and i will address it in um the following week's q a or the next q a coming up uh once again i'd like to um give a big welcome to all our new members. Thank you so much for being part of this group. Um, also too, what I would love um, to see is what you would like to see in the group. Um, let me know um, what um, what helps you, um, what um, activities you'd like to see in the group, um, because uh, you guys, this group's here for you guys. Um, and um, the more feedback that I get, um, the more that I have an idea of, you know, what can help you. Um, yeah, and what gets you going with your off the track thoroughbred. It's really hard to be out there by yourself um, with off the track thoroughbreds because there's not a lot of um, not a lot of clear retraining processes out there um, you know with with how to work with um, off the track thoroughbreds they're very different than other horses and need to be approached um, in, in a different way uh, I've worked with off the track well I've worked with thoroughbred racehorses in racing for 17 and a half years I'm going on 18 years now uh, and yeah I know them so well I just love them so much and they just make amazing horses after they leave the track um, but they need retraining that is so important they don't know anything other than racing unless they've been um, correctly retrained afterwards and uh, and racing life is very different um, to what we expect of them in the equestrian field. And they also um, come out of racing quite often with what I would call PTSD. Um, it's a very highly stimulating, demanding environment. So we need to be aware of that and be patient with our off the track thoroughbred and know, um, have a path to follow.
follow um, so that you know the correct um, way to be able to um, get through your issues that you're having and come out the other side um, successful. So that's what this group is here for and that's what my trainings are here for. So I hope everyone has a lovely day or a lovely evening wherever you are in the world and I will see you in the group and I will see you next week for our Q&A. Okay, bye.